Midsommar is one of the most impressive movies I've ever seen. It took me a couple of weeks to recover from it. And for a bloke who reckons he can handle things, to be affected like that by a movie, you've done a damn good job as a filmmaker. But here's the thing. I'm convinced that I would not be a victim if I found myself in the situation these characters found themselves in. And I'll explain why. If you're the kind of person that's going to go somewhere new, be around a bunch of strangers, and the first thing you do is start popping drugs, you're done for already. It's game over for you. You're the exact kind of person who's malleable enough to be tricked by these cults. I'm very anti-drug. I was before Midsummer, and I especially am now. Let's say you're going out with the crew and the gang. Everyone's getting pissed, and something goes down. Uh, are we going to handle things while you're inebriated? <laughs> That's a great idea, isn't it? We all know how well drunk people are at dealing with problems. No. Someone's got to stand up. Someone's got to be prepared. And even then, how well can you count on the ones around you to deal with conflict? Disastrous events? You may love them very much, and I hope that you do. But can you really rely on them to protect you and the others you love? The best option I can see is to be the one to stand up, to be the one to be prepared. If you're going to do drugs, Firstly, I'd like to personally insult you and your intelligence, but we'll set that aside. If you're going to do drugs, you don't do it somewhere new or around a bunch of people you don't know. You do it near people that you completely and utterly trust. It's like walking around a town you've never been to before with a bunch of $20 notes hanging out your back pocket. Sure, the people that rob you are the offenders and you're the victim and they're in the wrong, but there is responsibility on your part. If you're going to be an adult who's going to constantly change and improve upon who they are, you've got to be able to take responsibility for your actions or lack thereof. If the characters of Midsummer didn't start popping drugs, and they weren't pussies succumbing to peer pressure, they probably would have been alright. The group arrives at the destination, and instantly start taking shrooms. Danny, our heroine, it doesn't want to. And then her boyfriend's like, oh, babe, if you're not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, boys. I'm going to hold off. And then she feels bad because of peer pressure. And she's like, OK, I'll do it. And he's like, are you sure? And the boy's like, yeah, do drugs, you little bitch. And then she's like, fine, I'll do drugs. Uh, Christian, mate, you're not supportive enough of your missus. If she's got a brain cell and doesn't want to start taking drugs straight away, you support her. You say, hey, babe, if you want to get to know your surroundings before you start losing your brain cells, then sure, we'll do that. Boys, we're not going to take drugs yet, we're going to wait. Oh, but bro, take the drugs. Nah, I'm not taking drugs yet. You wait for a minute, yeah? And we'll do it later. If you want to do them now, you do them now. We'll join you later. But that doesn't happen. Danny succumbs to the pressure of her peers and she starts taking the drugs. Her weakness is a real shame. Because if your gut says something that ain't right, don't allow these idiots around you to convince you to do what you know isn't right. Because once you start going down these paths, it becomes very hard to come back from them. In saying that though, her weakness is understandable because of what she's going through and where she is mentally. But in saying that, we've got to remember she is an adult and she does have choice. The obvious one, the one where most people would yeet out, uh, the suicide. If this community is so accepting of brutal death, you don't accept that, bro? You go, yeah, nah, that's me, my mates, my missus, out of here. You stay on high alert from there on out. You don't wait around, let them give you a lift in their truck all the way to the next town. You don't sleep over the night and, oh, we'll figure it out in the morning. Nah, bro, you get the hell out of there. You steal their truck and you piss off. If you've got to crack heads, throw left and right hooks, left, right, center, you do that. Whatever you've got to do to get the hell out of there is what you've got to do. If your mates are saying, oh, nah, bro, it's just their culture, man, we good. Sorry, man, you can stay, bro, but I'm foxtrotting Oscar, yeah? I'm getting out of here. Maybe give it some time and come back and burn the whole community to the ground. Don't allow that place to exist. Like in the movie The Ritual, right? the main guy escapes the little forest area and gets away with his life when this big creature is trying to chase him. I'm thinking, you know what this bloke should do? He should go away, get his mind straight, get his physical stuff straight, and then come back in a few weeks, months time with a flamethrower, with Molotov cocktails, and burn the entire forest to the ground, all just to kill that one creature. 
And yes, when you start doing that, you stop becoming a victim in a horror movie and become the hero in a cursed action movie. And if rule number one of survival is don't be a hero and survival is all that really matters to you, then yeah, you can't fault a man for not going to these extreme measures. Now ideally, if you can compose yourself, you sort of want to act natural and then sneak your way out of the community without people noticing. But I didn't think about that till later on. I would have just been throwing left and right, getting the hell out of that place. The final thing that put the nail in Christian's coffin was again coming back to that instance of peer pressure. A girl gives him some drug tea and he clearly doesn't want to take it, but then he does just to not be rude or whatever. Even though there was a point when nobody was watching him, man could have just tipped the tea out into the ground and it would have been fine. He drinks it and then he ends up becoming a bear and he gets burned alive. Moral of the story, don't do drugs, don't succumb to peer pressure, be smarter and be tougher. All right, let's swap. You sit there. You sit there. Brandon and Egg. What do you think about everything that I just said? Well, I, I'm going back to your first thing. You're like anti-drinking of going out on a night. You think that one person should sacrifice having somewhat of a good time and not be on the same level as everyone else just in case that you might get attacked or something like that. I don't go out thinking, oh, I'm going to be attacked at this club with bouncers, with other people around. Unfortunately, it does happen, and bad stuff does happen, but I don't think a group of people go out thinking that. Sure, of course not. And that's a fair point, and I wouldn't expect everyone to follow this same sort of thing. But I guess when you go out, you're not expecting something to happen, but you know, you're out in the city, all kinds of crazy things are happening. People are getting aggressive and trying to fight you, and if you've got someone that's sober that's in the group that can deal with these kind of situations, then you'll be right. Because things happen, right? We've been out and you, yeah. we, come, we bump into some dodgy people. And even yeah, but that's we're... because we're just idiots and we <laughs> Maybe. start stuff like but that. Remember the time when we were in the city, I walked past a guy and he came over to me and wanted to fight me? I literally walked past him and he's like, were you walking past me, bro? I was like, yeah. Well, that's yeah, just unfortunate and you just defused the situation. Yeah, I did. But if I was drunk... You defuse the situation. I don't know if I would have, because maybe my pride would have overtaken, and it would have been like, yeah, I can walk past you, bro. He'd been like, no, you can't, and then we'll go more, 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 and then I would have had to kill the guy. Well, and then prison, I guess. <laughs> exactly. All because I had a couple of vodka Red Bulls. What do you, what do you think about the whole drinking and... Yeah, like, I, under I do understand, I guess, it's ideal to have someone who's sober with you, but I think ultimately... If you live your life like that, it's almost like living in paranoia, and uh -huh. it's probably, um, in fact, that might, at some point, I don't know if that would have a mental toll on you as a person if you're always, like, trying to, well, being sober's fine. Mm -hmm. That's, but Maybe if you're the on the lookout yeah. constantly for things and making sure, like, survival is key in, like, situations that may not even seem like sure. you need it, I don't know if that, if that's like sustainable it's hard to like relax yeah like that's fair you point. might be on edge too much and who knows that that might actually be a catalyst for other situations that escalate but yeah. like somebody might say something and the sober guy might be like oh this guy wants to fight when in reality that's not the case because he's so paranoid yeah yeah yeah, yeah i can't argue with that that's fair more so about the drugs i definitely agree with it's a bit wild that you would ever do this stuff like that especially things that can involve like hallucinations yeah, and stuff yeah. like that with people you do not know yeah. at all i feel like the first scene though when they take shrooms on a place similar to this yeah yeah they weren't doing it with the town they yeah. were doing it with friends they were actually like you said if you're going to do drugs do it with close friends people in a controlled environment they did do that. But there's heaps of people uh, around they didn't know. She was walking yeah, yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, but there's just strangers. The it's like going to a festival and doing drugs. There's strangers yeah. around, but you're with friends still. I'd say, yeah. You're, so you're in, say it was I'm a controlled just... environment. Except, and guess... there wasn't really a lot that went wrong. Unfortunately, the main protagonist, Danny, did hallucinate too hard. But, but that's, that was because that's, of the that's trauma. That's the beginning of the fall. Because oh, now, now they're susceptible. They're sort of trusting in these people. And now, I would say music festival is far from a controlled event. Controlled event is like sitting in your living room with a couple of homies. I guess, yeah. Well, music festival is people around, there's all kinds of uncontrolled things. To be fair, I would say a music festival is a little different anyway because music festivals still have yes. ambulances like on, yeah, guess, on, yeah, on yeah. the side in and security, security to get rid of people who are little, like Literal hostile. cops. Yeah, so yeah, it, okay. that's Maybe way a bad more... Example. It's still no, it's way a bad more, example. It's still way more controlled versus 
some guys lurking mm. in the distance that you don't know who they are and they could approach you at any moment and if you're inebriated in any way you might you know no it's definitely a fair comparison because i would also yeah. say like aside from the being anti-drug thing if i was okay with drugs doing it in your, your home with your boys whatever i would still be against doing it at a festival taking saying you have to take some kind of responsibility uh-huh. um and then you gave the example of having oh. a like money in the, the in your bank <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. which then you could also lead on to the whole uh this may be a, a little bit too spicy but like the women who may be under you know mm-hmm. you, some know, uh, yeah, um, yeah. some people say they are like could say they're underdressed or whatever yeah. but that leaves part responsibility on the woman mm-hmm. who gets say sexually assaulted whatever happens yeah, to yeah. her when i don't think that is entirely fair but i can't i couldn't remember what was the it's that a, it's the a movie very example it's a fair comparison to make or the movie the example made in the movie yeah. Uh, it was just about going to a place you've never been to before and then allowing yourself to not be aware of what's going on by doing the drugs. Yeah, okay, so then that does go back. It depends on that situation. Like, where they were, I would say maybe you need to be a bit more controlled than that. Mm-hmm. And uh, However, but if you're, in, if you're just talking about in general or even if you're just in public spaces where you shouldn't have to have that, like... Yeah, 100%. You shouldn't have to, constantly. and if you want to, you should be able to walk around with fifty dollar notes hanging out, hanging, hanging out of your back pocket. But you got to think you don't know the people around you. You don't know where you are. You don't know everybody. So to trust that someone's not going to do that just because it's the wrong thing to do, yeah, yeah I think that's an issue. So well, that's, that's you a can choose comparison. to take that extra step, but I would never, I would never say that it is entirely the responsible. No, definitely not entirely. You're still a victim. It's like not like not not locking up your bicycle with a yeah, yeah. To yeah, a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one should steal your bike because that's stealing, and you're the victim in that matter. But you got to be aware there are people that do that kind of thing. So you got to take the steps. You got to lock. You got to watch out where you lock your bike yeah, and all yeah. that. Yeah. Just like you got to not be intoxicated where you don't know who's around you, what's going on. The suicide. Ah, yeah. Yes. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it's hard to say. I I feel like I'd be in the same boat of like I just watched two elderly people jump off a rock and also get their head slammed in by a hammer. 72 were they? 72, yeah, because apparently that's They're what... Old, it's not that old in this he day and age, no. five years ago. Yeah, but in their culture, it's like, that's yes. as old, because they don't want to get older and be it like It makes sense in the nothing. movie as to why. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that's where I would have dipped out as well. Yes. Maybe I might have tried to have an open mind about yeah. like, it is their culture. It's very similar, I was thinking about this, where people... But this is more control because it's like a documentary. People go out to like, oh, there's cannibal tribes and all that. It's like these people are messed up and they eat people. But you have an open mind. Maybe they don't eat living people. They eat like old dead people and all that. And it's like that's a dangerous situation. But I suppose that that's they're going there knowing that kind of stuff. They're going, oh, there's a cannibal tribe. We're going to film them, and they're still held dangerous. But these guys, this is complete shock to them. And I feel like these guys are trying to be like, no, trust me, he's accepting, be, be one of us, were they, sleep with us. Would were you they, say, but would, this, would the scenario change? Because you keep on saying they as in the cultures or the people that lived in the town. But the person who was really convincing them to stay was their, one, of their one of their best friends. Yeah, exactly. So say in a scenario, we go with a group of people. Uh-huh. I take you to a place that I'm like, this is my hometown in Sweden, blah, blah, blah. Would you like, trust me? Because we've known each other for a while now. And no, you wouldn't trust me. If you're like, oh, I'll come to America to see my family, these are the guys, and then they jump off a cliff and they kill themselves. I'm like, nah, bro. All I'm right. not. I'm not. Even, I guess, I'm not a part of this. I guess I'm taking egg and I'm going. If egg really wants to stay, sorry, bro. Depends. Depends. What if, if I got a friend that I reckon I can knock him out and take? But you, him with you me. won't go. You're on high, high on drugs already. Yeah, you, you would have been peer pressured. No, no, yeah. no, no. Let we let's say we go, and we got a we got a friend who I reckon I can knock him out and take him with me, and he says I want to stay. I'm going to knock the guy out and I'm going to take him with me. You, you, you and fighting everyone, that's another thing. No, but to rescue them. Yeah, okay, I guess that's fair. But do you? But again, that's me imposing my Yeah, who makes beliefs. that decision? Because I'm like, so nah, I don't agree with this. He's been imposed upon and doesn't yeah. get to make his own yeah. Yeah, you're decision. Right. So you would be the criminal in that. So point. maybe I'm in the wrong, but I'm doing it out of, I'm trying to protect my friend here because I think this is dodgy as hell. You and fighting. Do you really think that you, single-handed, you're, you're a big dude, you've got fighting experience, for sure. There was like around about a hundred people at the 
village or whatever you want to call it. Do you think he could take on every single one? Because the moment you start throwing hands, yeah. they're not going to be like, oh, we're not going to yeah. deal with that. They're going to try and jump they come on out you. With their hammers and that. These old people are going to just mess you up. The, a, a lot of them I'm not worried about. There's a lot of women. There's a lot of old people. Oh, well, like, women can beat your ass, I'm sure. I've been beaten up by women before, okay? It happens. It happened like two You've days. heard it. It literally happened yesterday. <laughs> to us. But when I thought back, oh, you'd want to compose yourself. But it will get to the point where I'm running away, they try and stop me, and you're right. As soon as I knock a guy out, oh, okay. Now it's fight or die. Now I've got to knock out every single person that comes near me. They're going to have I, weapons. They're not going to yeah, go no. with this. So the goal is just to get to their truck and get the hell out of there. Is, am I going to survive and get out of there? No, I think not. I hey, think it's a definitive can you no. jump start a car? <laughs> there won't be keys in the car. Why not? Who's going to steal it? Well, say there isn't. Say they hold onto the van keys. Just the one little thing that is a realistic scenario. What are you going to do? Jump start it? You won't have time. Well, my, my only option is just to fight. And if I die, Or, I or die, do you but... keep them running? Do you just sprint? No, then they're going to get in their truck. True, yeah. See, here's the issue. Running away from a fight with multiple people, you're honestly better off fighting. Because if you start running and they start chasing, well, what happens? You're going to get to the end, you're going to be puffed out, and there's going to be four of them, they're just going to fight you still. If there was a forest, you could go in there, predator. Yeah, they know the do forest. A, do a whole predator thing, cover yourself in mud, <laughs> hide from everyone. They know the forest, I don't know it. But maybe you're right. Maybe it's better off going in the forest and then I can sort of, as they're running in, I can pick Hunt them up. Hunt them down. Run. Start with the children. But there were a few strong boys. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And they had weapons. They had knives yes, and all that. Yes, that'll be the issue. And, and the mallet. And the big mallet that <laughs> so looked very flimsy. Your best bet would be if I get to the truck and I can't start it, then you're going to you're gonna have to run to the forest and then start weaponizing yourself because they're going to come out with their mallets and their knives. And we'll, we'll, at that point, once I've started going down that path, I ain't got no other option, have I? Oh yeah, no, you're you're killing this entire it's town. Killer be and then, it's genocide, or it's no, oh, is it genocide? Oh, because it's only like no, hundred right, people. It's, like it's mass murder. Or is, well, technically, if that's with self-defense, maybe if that's the you only. You could argue town. it in court, but if you you could argue self-defense in court, but if you're successful, you won't have to. Dead so bodies. you you wanna you wanna bring up the fact that you would go back, guns blazing, Rambo <laughs> style. A different version of me would. Not this version. No. Not the version that would fight everyone hand-to-hand combat. No. This version of me, once I got out of there and I'm no longer in danger, I wouldn't harm anybody else. I totally understand something like the ritual. Like, there's a literal tree demon thing walking yeah, around it's no like I want it going back there yeah, it's like, I have no connection with that and I'm gonna I would kill genuinely it. consider going back and burning the entire forest down what do you think about the movie? I went into the movie I didn't know anything about it mm. I just heard oh there's this new movie that came out and it's really good and I watched it and I was pretty much blown away and I would say like you said I didn't know anything about this movie I knew it was about a cult and that was it so I think that definitely helped after watching it I thought I was gonna have trouble sleeping so I went, I went to the park with Savannah, not this one, the one over there. Yeah, yeah. And then I got back and I watched some high school musical songs. A- as you do, yeah. And I felt easy and it was all good. I didn't, I, I was fine. But then working the next day, I was doing 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. All was good. But as I'm coming home, I'm starting to get paranoid. I come home and like for every day for things like two weeks, I'm like searching my house thinking, what if some guys like come into my house? People just come gonna, out of your closet in like white I'm clothing. Sleeping. I'm literally... I get home, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I get my torch, I'm just looking around my corners, no one's hiding anywhere, no one's going to cut my throat when I'm sleeping. And that pissed me off, after it was like two weeks, I was like, alright, relax bro, ain't no one broke into your house, just go to bed. And uh, I eventually snapped out of it, but that's how... Well, I, I don't think... This it... daylight moved me, made me scared of the yeah. dark. I think what messed me up was just like, how well the story played out yeah. and like it was a slow horror that just did it perfectly and they got it i think that's part of it i was sort of i think i sort of let myself feel that way because i feel like i owed it to the filmmaker because i was so impressed with the movie but i feel like ariast ariasta the guy the, the guy who did it yeah yeah he did hereditary as well but i reckon the guy's outdone himself like i don't see how you can make like a horror film that's going to be able to match or top this. Wait until like, Midsummer 2. Okay, this is what I reckon, alright? Midsummer 2, but Ari- at night. Ari Asta <laughs> needs to make like a comedy or something. Go into a different genre. Alright, alright. Because horror and comedy, they're like the two genres that are like the hardest to do. So if you can do this incredible horror, you should be able to go and do an incredible comedy. And that's what I'd like to see from the guy. Pitch me this is comedy that movie like, that's, I don't know. that's I artsy. No, guy, but like, I want to see him do An that. artsy Grown Ups 4? <laughs> is there, there's not three. I wish there was three. That's why it's artsy, because it's yeah. four. 
I enjoyed that movie a lot. However, I didn't get the. It didn't, I didn't, it didn't affect, affect me like, like me. you guys. Maybe I have been uh, browsing the internet too much lately. Maybe you watch too many ISIS decapitation yeah, videos. Maybe. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Got to get off but, that um, random. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I just I think it's really good. Sadly, it didn't affect me like you guys. I still struck. I wouldn't say sadly. Yes. It's a good thing you were able to, you know, go to home and go to bed and well, live a normal life. 